What is that? It's a seven-year-old uh, paper mash <laughs> art project. Yeah, okay. From school. Good, good quality. What the hell? Pitted. Not really smooth carbon at all. So is it going to affect ride quality? Nah, but it might snap off. <laughs> Just feel it? Yeah, it feels pretty rough. Ribbed for extra pleasure. <laughs> you don't want to build it now. I've got better things to do. <laughs> and for all those young mechanics out there, you don't need gloves. Why not? Because you become one <laughs> with your surroundings. <laughs> Damn thing took a bite out of me. <laughs> no, the Becker doesn't even fit in there. Oh, yeah. No. If it wants to be stubborn, I'll tell you what, mate, I'm gonna hit you with a mallet. Like, if you were to start off by the front end, it's the worst frame I've ever seen. I never hit hit him with a rubber mallet but this bike I think deserved it so <laughs> what's going on now it's just dreadful like I've loosened this. doesn't want to go in nothing's fitting properly like I'm not rough on the tools and look there goes a massive bit of carbon or something what the like look at all that carbon and crap <laughs> So now is probably a good time to pause, take a deep breath and explain to you the original goal of this project, which was to build the cheapest race bike money can buy. A bike that I can take to the local criteriums and not feel overly disadvantaged for the least amount of money possible. Now, all the parts that were selected for this build, there is a caveat, which I'll share with you shortly. And if you're wondering what happened to the Elves frame, you can watch a video up there. However, for this specific build, we have the Trifox Times 10 Aero Frame at 640 USD, the integrated bars at 86 USD, the Sensor Empire Pro 12 speed group set at 388 USD, and the Elite Marvel Disc 60 millimeter wheels at 619 USD. For me personally, I bought everything in Aussie dollars, so everything delivered came in at 2,974 AUD, add $300 for the bits and pieces such as tires, saddle, and so forth. We have a total of 3,274 AUD. Yeah, you look thirsty. Thanks, boss. You can get it right. <laughs> There's actually a lip on the top of here. You can feel it fully pronounced. And yeah, that's just hitting it. Get out all the uh, faithful mallet again. Give it a bit of a grease. I don't really grease steers because they can get a bit slippy. But this isn't a normal build. It's a Trifox build. Do you want some help holding anything? Nah. Whoa, I got it. Oh, even still, like, it's just crazy. This is so tight. Size of everything's not right. Everything just has no finishing. Now the caveat is, because I know there will be somebody at home telling us, What an idiot! That's not cheap! Have a look at this magnificent frame, $69.70. That all these pieces, the frame, the group set, and the wheels were all voted by you, the audience. And a little shout out for Jay, who's building the bike today. He's expanding, he's got a new store opening. 241 Brisbane Street, Ipswich. Jay, what are you doing over there? Uh, we've got a cool new shop opening uh, in the top of Ipswich. Online store as well. And an online store. Ooh. Um, we're keeping this store as well, of course. We're going to have some really cool brands uh, in Ipswich. Uh, lots of mountain bikes, Rocky Mountain or Bayer. Shop rides, mountain bike rides. Now you're a fan of that cassette, weren't you? Yeah, because it's one piece. It's not going to dig into the freehub body either. We will grease this axle later too, by the way, but right now, <laughs> it's not even the right axle. Cam lost the correct axle. <laughs> we're getting death threats from Trifox after this. <laughs> it's funny, this new dub bottom bracket size is actually a zip tool from the 90s. Old school! <sighs> What do you 
reckon, Bailey? Speechless. <laughs> <laughs> She's a rapper. Oh, it's the wheels. I love the time people ride around with a real rattly bike. And all it is is simply the valves. All you do is get a little bit of electrical tape, stick it through like so, over there like that. Oh, sounds a lot better. It's an old uh, racist trick from the old days. <laughs> For a new derailleur. It's a lot of play, is it? A fair bit of movement. Yeah. Your medals? Forget about the other Oh, look, they're all your medals, are they? done that, mate. Oh, wow. You ride for Australia. Yeah. Wow. Downhill mountain bikes. Oh. Hello? It's got an outer hole cable here, but the funny thing is it's not on any nice angle, so if you're going to run it here, it won't even do that. You'd basically be cooking the cable. I'll show you if you did this. It's created this. It'll end up being more like this when it goes in there. It's basically cooked the cable. That's going to cause so much issues down the track so and then this little hole is so small and not even round there you go there's another little oh like that honestly almost cut me you can hear that so that's basically the same as the headset when i said ow like it's sharp everywhere again so rough down here that's cutting my finger well the cable going back and forth back and forth through this carbon as well the cable actually cut through the frame eventually right and then once it cuts through that, which I've seen before, it actually cuts through the, the axle of the um, crank. Clickety clack, don't come back. This here. Which is? The opposite hole to the rear derailleur cable, which should be the front derailleur. And they've actually put the rear brake runner through there instead. And that's meant to be the rear brake, which is the front derailleur. So what are you gonna do? Hit it with a rubber mallet again. <laughs> Have you experienced it before? Never. So basically they've got those two holes around the wrong way. Yep. But I'm gonna do a little sneaky cheat with the brake cable which we've got here. Not only did they Get run the, the housing running. through the wrong way, they put all gear cable stoppers in. What do they look like? It was meant to have a hole through it, so the cable's meant to be able to go through it. They gave us the wrong stuff. Put it through the wrong holes. So what do you do? You're gonna drill a hole drill through it? Drill a hole through it so the cable can go through it. I'm at the point with this build that I'm gonna treat it with the respect that it deserves. So you're actually making the holes bigger? Yeah. In the frame? With a mallet, my yeah. rubber mallet again. My best friend in this build. Oh, look at that. Goes in now. Yeah. We have brakes! Kind of. These are single piston brakes, so my trick is to center them, is you do up this side quite tight, that the cable hardly moves, and then squeeze on the rear brake, it'll rub heat. But if the brake's too tight, so then you back this off. You know, sometimes this life can get rough. So what have you done with the cables? Put them underneath, just because it was too hard to get in the holes, is that right? Yeah, they're small holes. You can't put the gear cable out that hole because it kinks. We could have spent another hour or two trying to get them through, but yeah. The holes aren't round, probably have to drill them, file them out. It's just a bit of a mess. A bar, to, tape. A bar tape to there anyway. I thought I was almost done. This is the, to cut the steerer, the piece which holds it in place. This is on a normal fork, Trifox ben. fork. You can't get it down. Oh, I can, but it's just, just gonna work it. Yeah. Twist it. Ah. So a couple of final issues. What's going on with this? It has decided to snap. And what issue is that We've causing? Fit it. Well, the gears were tuned, and now it's broken, and it's suddenly gone out of tune. So. What's that sound? Is that the bit of plastic? Yeah. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. It's stuck somewhere now. Well, we've done these bolts up over talked them um, yep, to try go. to stop this from happening and they're just the cradle here of the carbon is it's basically a different shapes either side like moves more than that so look at that and that's fully turned up so when you're like these are just with my hands when you're using your whole body in the saddle putting max watts through it's gonna move it's way time for narrow bike what do you reckon for a rim brake bike pretty heavy. I think we're done with the issues now. <laughs> <laughs> I've just, I've left in shock. So don't forget to give the video a like if you've gotten some form of value from it. And also don't forget to subscribe if you want to see this thing turn into 
A first impressions, or maybe I just launch it off a cliff. I'm not really sure what to do with it at this stage. I'll catch you in the next video. You can get it riding, you can get it sliding.